Hey, and welcome back to The Revolution and a brand new WWE 2K22 video. As earlier today, WWE in 2K unveiled a brand new series by the name of Ringside Report, hosted by WWE 2K's art producer Christina DM Pham and WWE 2K's creative director Lionel Jinx. In the ringside report, the duo got off the visual improvements made in WWE 2K22 as well as the brand new gameplay system and what you can expect when you get your hands on the game. To be sure you don't miss out on any of our WWE 2K22 content, be sure to hit that bell icon and subscribe to the channel. You can also head on over to our official website www.revolution.com where you'll find a breakdown of all of today's news and more. Before we get into things, I just want to say I absolutely love the dynamic between Lionel and Christina and it makes for a far more entertaining yet informative way to give the fans an update with fellow dev team members set to pop in and out over the next few months. When the January trailer hit, I said I absolutely loved the fresh take with the new energy and that I hoped the same energy would continue throughout the rest of the campaign. Thankfully, it looks as though this might be the case and I wholeheartedly hope it continues. Seeing as today's ringside report goes a little deeper than usual, we'll be doing things a little differently and splitting the video into sections and picking out the most important information. This time around, 2K approached the game and its production with the goal of having the WWE superstars represented to the best of their ability and one of their ultimate priorities. With that goal in mind, the team decided to bring in the same technology used in their fan favourite NBA 2K series with the cross polarization scans and the hugely requested update to hair physics in their design. After seeing the results of just how big an improvement the new technology made in NBA 2K22, it was a no-brainer for the team to replicate and remodel the WWE superstars in WWE 2K22. According to Jinx, the technology allows WWE superstars to have a new level of detail, but without the brand new lighting and VFX, none of that work would look as just as good as it does right here. The WWE superstars are only a fraction of the huge task of the overhauling in the game, with a lighting and VFX engine being updated this time around. Overhauling the lighting and VFX engine means the game looks more TV accurate than ever before, especially when you compare it to previous iterations in the 2K series. Speaking of new and improved, Jinx and Christina also provided a quick sneak peek look at the highly teased new and improved championships with a look at the new United States Championship, Intercontinental Championship, SmackDown Women's Championship, WWE World Heavyweight Championship, the Raw Women's Championship, the Universal Championship and what looks to be the NXT UK Tag Team Championships. Whilst the superstars may be an integral part of the game, you can't leave out the environments and arenas with 55 playable arenas this time around, including what looks to be two versions of the Thunderdome, with one version featuring the virtual crowd as seen during the Performance Centre era. As Christina and Jinx move on to the new and improved gameplay, the pair are joined by the gameplay leadership team, which includes the principal designer Jason Vandiver, senior designer Derek Donahue, and the senior producer Jonathan Rivera. With introductions out of the way, the team gives us our very first look at the official in-ring gameplay. On discussing what makes WWE 2K22 hit different, Jason explained that the new animation system has allowed the team to greatly improve the look and feel of the characters. From how the superstars move and interact with the environments around them, to how they interact with other superstars, every animation has been overhauled. Jason also added that superstars and AI are way more responsive this time around and you no longer have to fight against the controls to make your chosen superstar do exactly what you want and make those more important moves connect. Another aspect that has been improved this time around are the physics. In previous instalments, the main focus has been animating the hair and cloth textures. For WWE 2K22, the team have introduced breakable props such as fraying kendo sticks, chairs and more dynamic breaks to the outside environments including barricades as well as all new table breaks. Moving on to gameplay, Derek said the focus this time around was for WWE 2K22 to have the element of a pick up and play title, opening the game up to new players as well as providing a challenge for returning players. As part of that, the team have revamped the control scheme with three focal points being the new light attacks and heavy attacks as well as the grapple system. Light attacks are the fastest attacks in the game which although quick provide minimal damage compared to other moves. 
Heavy attacks, formerly known as strong strikes, are bigger yet slower attacks that deal more damage to opponents. When it comes to grapples, players can press the grapple button with the option to follow up with a light or heavy attack, as well as an Irish whip or the carry and drag system. According to Jonathan, the combos this year are simple and dynamic and offer a more strategic gameplay with the execution of light attacks, beginning a string of possible combo moves. Different combos suit different superstars and playstyles and are completely customizable to cater for each player's suited playstyle. It seems as though strategic playing is a game changer this time around, which opens the game up to players of all skill levels with a new defensive way to play. A new addition to the series are breakers, which coincide with the reversals. This time around, counters and grapples don't use up reversals, but remain in place for striking animations. This time around, players use a rock, paper, scissors style system called breakers, which come into play once combos and grapples are activated. If the opponent chooses the same light, heavy or grapple input, the opponent will then counter said action with a reversal. So in summary, moves are countered with breakers and everything else is countered with reversals. Another new feature is the implementation of blocking stances, which can withstand light and heavy attacks as well as running attacks. Blocking stances come into play when holding the block button and when performed correctly can counter attack opponents faster in retaliation. Players can now also dodge with the right buffer when choosing a direction and although more risky compared to a block, can be quite handy if executed correctly. The right bumper can also be used to allow players to get back on their feet faster when down but at the cost of player resources. Alternatively, players will have to resort to button mashing to get up off the mat as well as when being pinned. Defensive play will be a lot more strategic this time around and even when attacking you have to think about when your opponent may count your every move. Switching to the HUD, Jonathan said the team wanted to strip down all the unnecessary parts seen in previous HUD menus and only display the relevant information the players need. The top of the HUD displays the player's vitality meter which is essentially the player's health bar. Underneath the vitality bar, we have this special meter, which contains resources that are used for player's signatures, payback and defensive actions. The bottom gold bar is the finisher meter, which can store up to three finishers. This time around, the team decided to remove the reversal stock bars due to the introduction of unlimited reversals and more strategic gameplay. According to the team, the removal of limited reversals has provided a wild variety of gameplay sessions with players going back and forth in memorable matches. As part of that motion, they also implemented a new stun meter, which is displayed on superstars after taking damage. Light attacks while doing less damage to the superstar increases the stun bar. Once filled, the superstar becomes stunned and unable to reverse or use breakers, which provides the opportunities to use grapples and finishers. In previous games, players would have to wait for their opponent to use up all their reversals before attempting to hit a finisher, but now, thanks to the variety of options such as breakers and the stun meter, it really does become a game of chess between opponents. According to Jinx, all the new features create a more intense matchup and encourages players to practice their button mashing skills before release. Switching away from the gameplay, in the closing moments of the video, Christina quizzed the team on what their favourite moments have been and what they're most looking forward to once the game launches. With Jason focusing primarily on gameplay, he said he's most looking forward to the introduction of My Rise after hearing great things from fellow team members working on that portion of the game. In a slight tease, Jason said after hearing what they've been working on, they are ready to deliver an awesome story to the fans. When it comes to Derek, he's most looking forward to exploring the brand new redesigned backstage areas with a lot of really cool things going on that we have yet to see in the trailers. Jonathan said he's most looking forward to diving into the Rey Mysterio showcase mode and replaying those classic matches that have been recreated in WWE 2K22. Although Christina may have overlooked him originally, Jinx said he's been lucky enough to have explored all avenues in WWE 2K22 and he can't wait to see how all the different game modes gel together and for fans to start having fun in a new WWE 2K game. I have to say, I really do love the vibe the team are giving off here today. Not only did we get a huge chunk of information we've been waiting on for weeks, but we also got to have some fun in the process. Like I said at the start of the video, Christina and Jinx have some really great energy and I hope this is how things pan out going forward in future ringside reports. I will say I'm pleasantly surprised by how much more open and excited I am about the different playstyle after being someone who usually much prefers the simulation style we've all come to know and love. Having this strategic method constantly playing throughout a match will create a more intense matchup between fellow players and AI, even more so when it comes to important events such as title matches. 
The addition of breakers and the tweaks to existing features could really open the game up to more competitive matchups between players and create a complete new faction of WWE 2K fans and competitive content. I can only gauge so much watching the matchup and I can't wait to get my hands on the actual game itself so I can see how it feels for myself. Last month, fellow content creators Vibe insisted that playing the tutorial upon starting the game is the best way to go and now I can honestly see why. In all honesty, I can't remember the last time I had to play a wrestling video game tutorial, but I kind of can't wait to see just how different things may be. But that's enough of what I think of today's video, I want to know what you at home make of the changes to the controls and gameplay. Later today we'll be going over all the showcase male and female superstars shown in the trailer as I didn't want anything to get lost in the shuffle, especially given how long we've waited for gameplay. To be sure you don't miss out on any of our WWE 2K22 content, be sure to hit that bell icon and subscribe to the channel. You can also head over to our official website www.revolution.com where you'll find a breakdown of all of today's news and more. Until next time, I've been The Revolution and I'm off to plan my strategy.